Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to cover the concept of singletons inside of Godot. Now, typically in other game engines and other programming languages, the concept of a singleton is something that is more scripting or programming specific, whereas the Godot engine has decided to make the singleton pattern built into the engine itself. Now, this has many benefits. The main one being that we don't have to go in and actually code the functionality around this. Um, and the fact that since it is built into the Godot engine, all of the edge cases are going to typically already be covered. So, what is a singleton? Well, a singleton basically makes it so that we have a script with a single instance across the entire project, okay? Because right now in our games, we have scripts such as player, pick up, score text, you know, all those things. Um, and a singleton will basically make it so that um, one script, let's just say we might have a game manager, well, that script is no longer actually going to be attached to a node in our scene. Rather, it is now going to exist sort of outside of our scene structure. It's going to sort of exist above it um, as its own singular instance in memory. Um, and whenever we want to utilize that script, it can run as a normal script does. Uh, we no longer need to access it by getting the node. Rather, we just directly write down the script name to access its properties and functions. Now, why is this a good thing? Well, let's just say, for example, we have a script um, in the example we have right here, which might keep track of our player's score. Okay, so let's just say we have a score manager. And if we look here, I've gone ahead and created a script called score manager. And you can see the only thing in the script we have is a variable called score. Well, uh, let's just say we then have a little game like this where we want to go around and we want to pick up these things You know, we might defeat enemies pick up stuff um, to increase our players score Well, what happens if we then load into another scene? Well, that is then going to basically delete all of the nodes that we currently have in this scene including the player the pickups um, And even the score manager itself. Okay, so in this example here I basically have it so that when I press enter it is going to reload the scene and you can see as you expect everything basically gets reset, even our score. But in many games, we want our score to persist across scenes, okay, level one, level two, level three, we want our score to remain the same. So how can we do that? Well, what we would then do is turn our score manager uh, script, which is keeping track of this variable, into a singleton, so that no matter what happens, if we reload a scene, if we delete a scene, if we go to the menu, this score manager script is going to maintain its existence in memory, okay, and thus keeping the score variable constant. So before we look at how we can convert this project over, let's first of all look at what this project is, okay? It's just a little game I've set up. So basically we have a player down here that we can control with the arrow keys and attached to this player is a player script. So if I have a look at that, basically we have the ability to move our player around with the keyboard and also flip the sprite direction, okay? Just some little touches there. Um, and then up here, if I press the enter key, this is basically going to reload the current scene, okay? If I press play again, you can see I can move around with the um, arrow keys, and if I press enter, it's going to reload our scene, okay? Um, now, this is just there to act as an analog for when we were switching to different scenes. Um, the same behavior with the singleton is going um, to be present in both those examples. Now, we also then have our pickups, which are these little objects here, and these are basically have, uh, these have the pickup script, which, first of all, we have this little bobbing up and down visual to give it some, I guess, some visual um, uh, juice. We then have a function which gets called when um, a body has entered this area 2D. We're basically checking to see if it's the player, and if so, we are accessing the score manager uh, node, which is this node right here, and we are increasing the score by one and then of course destroying the node. So in the score manager, this variable is basically ticking up by one each time we pick up a pickup. And then finally we have a UI text label right here, which every single frame is basically just updating um, the text to display score and then the current score number. Okay, so Fairly straightforward project. Once again, let's play it so you can have an idea of what's going on. We can move around, we can pick up these items. You can see our score ticks up by one each time we do that. And if I press enter, this is going to reload the scene, but you could also maybe have it so it goes to level two, level three, or so on and so forth. 
Um, and the main issue we have here is that our score is stuck on zero again, okay? And that is because everything inside of our scene is reliant on this scene being active. The moment this scene is destroyed or reloaded or unloaded, all the memory, all the players' positions, all the pickups that are alive and not, all of our score, that is all reset, okay? Which is what we want, but we want our score to remain persistent across scenes. So how can we do that? Well, like I said, we can turn it into a single tin. So the first step in setting up a single tin is by going up to project at the top and then going down to project settings. Now, inside of project settings, we want to go to the top and we want to navigate over to where we have globals. Now, globals is basically where we can assign scripts to be what is known as auto-loaded. Now, auto-load scripts are basically scripts that are loaded into memory when the game is started, okay? Outside of any scene structure. So right now we have none, but what we can do is simply click on this little folder icon to find one. So let's go to a singleton, find our score manager script and click open. And then you can see over here, it says node name, score manager. Um, this is basically what we need to write down in order to access um, this uh, script inside of our code and click add. And here we go. So we have the name of the auto loaded singleton. We have the path to the script. And then we also have this thing here, which is called global variable. And right now it is enabled. Now what global variable basically means is, are we able to access the variables um, from this script, such as our score? Now, that's the entire purpose of us doing this. So of course we want to enable that. But if you have private variables, you might want to untick them because um, you might have a, you might have a uh, singleton that just has functions you want to access. Okay, but for us, we want to access a variable. So now that we have that set up, we can close this. We can then delete our score manager node here, which contains the score manager script because we no longer need that. So we can delete that. We can then hop into our scripting. Now, if we go over to the pickup, Instead of accessing the score manager node, we are instead just going to write down score manager and then go dot score plus equals one. Okay, remember this here is that score manager name that we assigned for the singleton. We can then, for example, just comment this out. And then for score text, we want to set our score manager. In fact, we don't actually need this variable. We can comment that out. And instead just go score manager.score, okay? It's fairly easy to access variables and functions from singletons, okay? And to call a function, you would of course just write score manager and then dot, you know, function name as you would any other way, okay? So we can save that, press play, and now that should work as expected. You can see we can pick up these potions, that is going to increase our score, but now look what happens when I reload the scene the score has remained persistent, okay? And that is because the score manager script is no longer being run inside of this scene tree. Rather, the score manager script is being run outside of the scene structure, okay? It's sort of on an abstract layer above everything else, all right? Um, now, of course, if we want to reset our score, we will just have to set the variable back to be zero. Um, so those are the downsides, I guess, with singletons. Um, not necessarily downsides, but things that you need to be aware of. And that is the fact that, you know, since you are um, having this data be persistent across your entire game, if you want to, for example, reload the game, let's say you go back to the main menu, you start a new game, for example, well, the score would still be 29. So you would then have to go in and manually change those values back to their defaults. Okay, but that's just a little um, bump in the road. Generally, singletons are a great way, as I said, to have persistent data. Now, don't make the mistake of having every single thing in your game a singleton, as that is generally not the best practice as like I said there can be a lot of issues and it can lead to some um, bad habits forming especially when you're trying to maintain data in a game. So that is how we can set up a singleton inside of Godot. Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to be exploring the observer pattern inside of Godot. Now before we jump into what the observer pattern is, let's first of all look at this little project I've set up here. So basically we have five different lights here inside of our scene and if I go ahead and play it, I can press the up arrow to turn them on and press the down arrow to turn them off. Now how do you think I am going about um, setting this up? 
Well, um, if we go over to our scripts, let's first of all look at the actual light itself. We basically have an on and off sprite, and then down here in the turn on function, we're basically just setting the sprite to be on, and for turn off, we're setting the sprite to be off. Okay, so fairly simple here. Now, if we go over to the light manager, you'll see this is the setup we have here. We have a variable keeping track of each light we have inside of our scene. And then down in the process function, we are checking to see when the up arrow is pressed. And when that is pressed, we are calling the turn on function for each of our lights. Same thing for when we press the down arrow key, we are calling the turn off function for each of these lights. Okay, so that is what is giving us this behavior right here. Now, you may be looking at this and going, you know, that's alright, we're simply just getting a reference to our lights and then calling the functions respectively, but this here is what I would call some pretty bad code um, for two reasons. First of all, we are repeating the exact same action many, many times, which generally in code, um, if you are doing something multiple times, either chuck into a function, a loop, or um, chuck into a signal, okay? Now, with this code, we are also um, having an issue in terms of scalability and dependency, okay? Every single light we add to the scene, we have to add a new variable to the list here, and then we have to add um, its turn on call and its turn off call, um, which, you know, for a couple lights, that's okay, but what if, for example, I wanted to add in 100 new lights to our scene, okay? That would require a lot of code being added to this, and this script would be hundreds of lines long, all of it pretty pointless, okay? Um, so what we are going to do now is explore the observer pattern. And in Godot, we are going to accomplish that with signals. Now, now, what is the observer pattern? Well, this is a subscription mechanism. But what do I mean by that? Well, you have two um, things inside the observer pattern. You have the subject and you have the observers. Now, the observers are going to be like these lights right here. And our subject is going to be the light manager. Now, the light manager is going to be basically emitting a signal to all of the observers. A great way to think about this is sort of like a radio tower, okay? A radio tower emits a radio signal, but it doesn't know exactly what radios or what cars or what homes are going to be picking up that signal, okay? Because right here at the moment in our light manager, we need to know all of our observers, okay? We are listing down each and every one of our observers in order to directly communicate with them. That's not what a radio tower does. A radio tower just emits a signal in all directions, and then the observer, which might be your radio, your car, your phone, that then listens for that signal, and then it basically runs whatever instructions that signal carries over. That is what we are going to do here using Godot's signal system, okay? So instead of referencing every single light in our scene here and calling it for each turn on and turn off, we are going to have none of that, okay? The subject, which is our light manager, is not going to even know if a single light in our scene exists, okay? It's going to behave the exact same way for whether there are zero lights, one light, two light, or a thousand lights, okay? And our code is going to look the exact same as well. Now, you may have already used signals inside of Godot before. If we go over to the inspector and click on the node panel, you'll see that we have all of these signals that we can basically connect to our scripts. And that is basically what the observer pattern is. Okay, you have the subject, which for example, here you can see we have the node um, class right here. That would be the subject. And then whatever we connect this signal to, that would be the observer. Okay, because with a signal, you have something that emits the signal that is the subject, and then you have something that listens for the signal, which is the observer. So, let's go ahead and set this up. So the first thing we're gonna do inside of our light manager is delete the um, list of lights we have here. It looks doesn't look that nice, and we're not going to be needing that. Let's also delete that inside of our process function. I'm just gonna chuck in a pass so we don't get any errors here. Okay, and we are then going to create our signals. So we need two signals one for turning on the lights, and one for turning off the lights. So here I'm going to create a brand new signal. Now, we've pretty much in the past worked with signals using the node panel here, but these are not all the signals we are limited to, okay? We can create our own custom signals in script, so let's do that now. So to create a signal, we first of all need to define the signal keyword. So we'll go signal, and then a space, and we just want to then give it a name. So here I'll just go turn on lights. Then we can do another one. This one is going to be for turn off lights. And there we go. 
Now, the way we can actually emit this signal, okay, emit the signal from the radio tower, <laughs> um, if you want to follow that analogy, is if we go into where we're pressing the up arrow, we can go turn on lights dot emit, okay? And same thing down here for UI down, we'll go turn off lights dot emit, like that. Okay, so we have our signals, we are emitting and we are, uh, so we're emitting for both turning on and turning off, but if I press play, you'll notice that, well, nothing happens, and that's because our lights don't, first of all, know these signals exist, and second of all, aren't doing anything when they're called. So what we need to do is connect these signals to the light's respective turn on and turn off functions. So to do this, inside of the light script, which is attached to each and every one of our lights, I am going to go ahead and create the ready function, which gets called when the node is first initialized. Um, we then want to get our light manager node, which contains the light manager script. So I'm just going to create a variable here called manager. And this is going to be equal to the, we can just drag that node in to get a reference to it. And then what we're going to do is go manager and then go dot turn on light. So you can see we have this little signal um, icon here to know that this is a signal and not a variable or a function. And then we're going to go dot connect and we're going to give it the turn on function okay we'll do the exact same thing for turn off so we'll go manager dot turn off lights so we're accessing the signal now dot connect and we want to specify what function we want to connect it to so turn off just like that now if we go ahead and press play you'll see that when i press the up arrow key we have these lights turn on turn off and so on now, since we are using signals and not directly referencing the variable in the script, we can create as many lights as we wish. So if I want to go ahead and select these, let's go ahead and duplicate them. Let's create a bunch of uh, more copies here. We have a large amount. And again, we don't have to know that any of these exist. The light manager does not know a single light exists. All it knows is that it has a signal it is emitting. And if something wants to listen to that signal, it can, okay? Um, and it doesn't matter if there's one thing listening to it or a million things. Um, that light manager is gonna always emit that signal and anything that is listening, the observer, that is always going to then receive that signal and then run the code respective of that.